Hello and welcome everyone. Sepsis-induced coagulopathy is a complication that can further increase the mortality rate of sepsis, particularly when associated with disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC. Early detection and appropriate management of DIC are crucial for managing sepsis effectively. Traditional overt DIC criteria often miss the early detection of DIC. SICK criteria and scoring system, introduced in 2017, aim to identify early-stage DIC and were adopted by the International Society on Thrombosis and Hemostasis in 2019. The goal of detecting SICK is to identify patients at high risk of developing overt DIC earlier. While anticoagulant therapies are a potential treatment for sepsis-associated DIC, their effectiveness remains uncertain, requiring further research. An international collaborative platform is necessary for future clinical trials to evaluate these therapies. The SICK scoring system is simple, making it suitable for clinical use in managing sepsis-associated DIC. In a healthy state, vascular endothelial cells keep the blood flow smooth by producing substances like nitric oxide and prostaglandin I2, which prevent clotting. The endothelial surface also uses systems like antithrombin and thrombomodulin to maintain this antithrombogenic environment. However, in sepsis-induced coagulopathy, this balance is disrupted. Monocytes release tissue factor, triggering the extrinsic coagulation cascade, while exposed collagen under the damaged endothelium starts the intrinsic pathway. Neutrophils release nets, which further drive clot formation and inflammation. Platelets join in by releasing von Willebrand factor and platelet factor 4, creating blood clots. Damaged endothelial cells also release more VWF and ANGIOPOIETIN2, worsening the condition. This shift from preventing clots to excessive clotting is central to sick, leading to dangerous clots and bleeding risks. Managing this change early in sepsis is crucial to IMP. Concept of sick criteria Simplicity and ease of calculation are the key features of the SICK scoring system. It uses two readily available coagulation markers that can be measured quickly and inexpensively, making it suitable for bedside use, emergency rooms, and repetitive monitoring, especially in resource-limited settings. Despite its simplicity, SIC has shown adequate sensitivity and specificity in identifying patients at risk for DIC, a limitation of SICK is its relatively low specificity, requiring differentiation from other severe conditions like cirrhosis, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, and thrombotic microangiopathy. SIC's characteristics vary based on patient demographics, comorbidities, and the extent of organ failure, potentially detecting mild or non-progressive cases. As for the scoring system itself, it was developed by the DIC Scientific Standardization Committee of the International Society on Thrombosis and Hemostasis, ISTH, using data from over 1,400 septic patients treated with recombinant thrombomodulin. Through univariate and multivariate analyses, three independent predictors of 28-day mortality were identified, platelet count, prothrombin time, PT, and the SOFA score. Here's how the SICK diagnosis is determined. Platelet count earns 1 point if it's between 100 to 150 times 10 to the power of 9, L, and 2 points if it's less than 100 times 10 to the power of 9, L. PTINR gets 1 point if it's between 1.2 to 1.4, and 2 points if it's greater than 1.4. The SOFA score contributes 1 point if it's 1, and 2 points if it's 2 or greater. SICK is diagnosed when the total score reaches 4 or more. According to studies, the prevalence of SICK is around 22 to 24 percent. What's crucial is that SICK often presents early, either at the time of sepsis diagnosis or within the next four days. Now, here's a key point. Mortality is significantly higher in patients with SICK. In the HYPRESS trial, the 90-day mortality rate for SICK patients was 26.8 percent, compared to just 13.9% for those without SICK. That's a huge difference. Here are some risk factors. The clinical benefits of the SICK scoring system. First, early identification. Recognizing SICK helps catch patients at risk of developing serious coagulation issues like disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC, early on. This can be critical in managing organ dysfunction associated with sepsis.
Next, tailored treatment strategies. Sick assessment allows doctors to create individualized treatment plans, especially when it comes to using anticoagulants or other therapies to prevent further complications. Monitoring disease progression. By regularly monitoring sick, clinicians can track how coagulopathy evolves and adjust treatment plans in real time to improve outcomes. Risk stratification. Sick evaluation helps identify patients who need closer monitoring or more aggressive intervention, preventing adverse outcomes related to blood clotting abnormalities. Finally, enhanced prognostication, including sick assessments in the overall sepsis management helps clinicians in prognostication. When managing sepsis in the ICU, it's critical to classify patients early based on their coagulation status. Upon admission, patients can either be categorized as non-sick, sick, or overt DIC. For non-sick patients, monitoring continues throughout their stay, while for sick patients, the condition must be assessed daily to monitor progression. Overt DIC is more severe, with patients at higher risk, requiring closer monitoring and potential intervention. Anticoagulant therapy should be considered for sick and overt DIC cases unless there are signs of bleeding. Early identification and appropriate treatment can make a significant difference in patient outcomes. So to conclude, sick is a simple and practical diagnostic tool, especially valuable in emergency rooms and for repeated monitoring in the ICU. It serves as an early warning system for severe complications in sepsis, guiding clinical trials and potential anticoagulant interventions. Thank you.